here's our problem. Uh, now I'm going to draw these vectors out. So she's walking 12 meters, 68 degrees north of east. Now, what that means is that I'm pointing east, and I'm going to turn 68 degrees north of that. So let's say that that represents 12 meters at 68 degrees north of east. And I can draw in, this would be the 68 degrees right there. Okay. Then, yeah. Okay, so we, you know, we talked about this a little bit on Friday. So you're at a little bit of a disadvantage, Sebastian. But um, we're with these cardinal directions, and this is going to be a little bit tough at first. Uh, there's, if you look at that doc, there's a video that Mr. Hammond made actually that goes over this too. But if you if you look at these directions right here, it says north of east. So what that means is that you're pointing east. This will be east, north south and west and i guarantee you that there's a few people that are confused about this so north of east means that i'm pointing east and i'm turning north of that direction so once again north of east means i'm pointing east turning north of that direction so then the 68 degrees goes in between the east and the north all right well, so if it just says northeast, we don't know exactly if the 68 degrees goes here or here. And northeast to me means 45 degrees in between north and east. So we want we want exact like we want it to be exact. If you were uh you know, if let's say if you were in the army in the desert and you were trying to find a spot and I just told you northeast instead of 68 degrees north of east, you may not end up anywhere near where you're supposed to. So you may not end up near the water or supply drop off or whatever it is, if that makes sense. So we're going to be like really precise. Okay. Now the second vector is, so that's the first one, 12 meters, 12 meters at 68 degrees north of east. The next one, 16 meters due east. I forgot the M, but it should be there. So 16 meters due east. So for that one, I'm going to start, remember, at the end, and I'll go 16. Let's say that's 16 meters. So due east means I'm going exactly that direction. Okay, then I'm walking tw 22 meters, 72 degrees east of south. So south points straight down. And east of that means that I'm turning towards the east direction. So let me just draw that one right here, and then we'll place it here, okay? So uh, I'm walking 22 meters, so it's gotta be a little bit longer. And it's I was pointing in the south direction, and then I walk 72 degrees east of that, or I turn 72 degrees east. Let's say that looks something like that. So this angle right there would be 72 degrees. Okay, that goes at the end of this. So, so far I've walked up, over, down. And then finally, so that was that one. Then finally I'm walking 18 meters at 77 degrees south of west. So that means I'm pointing west and I'm turning 77 degrees south of that. So I'm just going to draw it over here and then we'll put it we'll put it back in our spot there. So uh, 18 meters, I don't know, let's say it's like that. And it, I was pointing west, but I had to turn 77 degrees south of that. So this angle here is going to be 77 degrees. So I would pick this up and I would put it here. So I walked this direction, then this direction, then this direction, then this direction. So my resultant, the one vector that could replace all those, I'll just do it with a dotted line here because it's easier, would be that, okay? Now, that's gonna be hard for me to find. I don't know that math. So what I'm going to do, and we're just gonna take this, we're gonna move it for now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these vectors, and it might be easier if I change the color of them so we could see them. 
I don't know, green, green's easy to see. So I'll make them all green. I'm gonna take all of these vectors and I'm going to put them at the origin. Oops. Sorry. Still changing the color. Uh, so green and green. So I'm just gonna move these vectors so that they all point from the origin. So for that one at 68 degrees, this one we said uh, 72 degrees east of south. So this right there, that would be 72 degrees. And then this one, I'll put at the origin. And this said 77 degrees south of west. So that right there would be 77 degrees. Now, the reason, the reason that I'm putting the, all of these at the origin, you guys, is I wanna find out the X part of each one, and then I wanna find out the Y part of each one, and I wanna add them together so that I have one X and one Y. Um, when you looked at those concept builders, hopefully that helped everybody understand. Um, just by counting the squares for the X and Y, you can get just the X piece and just the Y piece. And then if you add up all the X's, you get one X. Add up all the Y's, you get one Y. So we did that um, last time. I'm gonna move this again out of our way. I wanna keep it around just to make sure that we did it right. And so we're gonna make our little, we're gonna make a little table. And this table is gonna have all of the X values. And it's gonna have all of the Y values. Now before, I told you guys that as long as we always take, as long as we always take the angle that's touching the x-axis, so this is 72, uh, oops, sorry, this would be 18 degrees. That's supposed to be a one. Let me erase that. So if we always take the angle that's touching the x-axis, that means x is always going to be our adjacent side. And so the x is always going, the x component will always be um, the vector. Oops, let me write that down. The vector, the original vector times the cosine of the angle. So x will always be the vector times the cosine of the angle. The y component will always be that original vector times the sine of the angle. But in order for that to work, we always have to use the angle from the vector to where it touches the x-axis. That way x is always adjacent, y is always opposite. Cosine is adjacent, sine is opposite. So let's, let's go through um, this angle right here. And we can even write, so this one was 12. Uh, the one that was due east was 16 meters. 12 meters, uh, this was east, uh, 72 degrees east to south. This was uh, 22 meters. And then this one over here, this was 18 meters. Okay, so you can see I didn't quite draw them to scale correctly, but I mean, they're close, they're all right. Um, so let's look at this one first, the 12. So what would the X component of this vector be? Well, it would be 12 times the cosine of 68. And then what would the Y component of this vector be? That would be 12 times the sine of 68. And then let's look at this one. So this, the X component would be 16 times the cosine of zero. And the Y component would be 16 times the sine of zero. Now, if you don't wanna punch that in your calculator, you could just say, hey, uh, 16 times the cosine of zero, that's 16. 
16 times the sine is zero, that's zero. Because this one doesn't move up and down on the y-axis, right? It's only on the x. So you could just write 16 and zero. When I do them on the board, that's what I usually do, but we'll just stay consistent. It all works. So then this one, this would be 22 times the cosine of 18. And for the y, it would be 22 times the sine of 18. Now we have a slight problem here, okay? Because in this quadrant, and you guys learned this in geometry, the x values are positive and the y values are positive. But in this quadrant, the x values are positive, the y values are negative. So we would have to subtract out the y value over here from the ones up here. So here, we need to make this negative 22 times the sine of 18. Does everybody remember that? I hope. And here, I'm gonna pull up the chat window on the side so that I can see if anybody has a question, you could just type it in there. Then remember in this quadrant, uh, X's are negative, but Y's are positive. We don't have one over here. And in this quadrant, X's are negative, Y's are negative. So for this final one, um, the X is gonna be negative 18, because X is negative, times the cosine of 77. And then the Y is going to be negative 18, times the sine, oops, of 77. So this isn't hard math, but it is tedious. I have to punch all these in my calculator, get an answer, and then add them all up. So I add this one to this one to this one, and remember this one gets subtracted. So did anyone do all those in their calculator? Add, 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 subtract. What would my final answer here be? I know you'll be faster than I am. Did everyone get this, hopefully, for the X? It was 37.4, is that what you got? Oh, okay, so we're close. I'll change it to 37.5. We probably just rounded differently. Okay, and then someone do this one for me. You got 1.6 for here? Okay. Okay.
Okay. You know, that seems right. That seems pretty close to being right. Or right. <laughs> so now, so now you guys, we have one X value and one Y value. And because they're both positive, uh, what that means, and we'll do these, we'll do these in green. Oh no, actually let's do them in pink since we have green already on here. All right, so what that means is we're gonna have one X value that goes out 37.5 and then one Y value that goes up, oops, it barely goes up. It's just gonna go up one and a half, like that. And so when we draw out the resultant, It is zero, yep. Oh, okay, all right. That actually matches our original prediction. So uh, that, it'll be negative 13.2. So that means it's gonna go down. Here, I'll just draw it. So it'll go down 13.2. Oops, I thought I was gonna make that pink. Okay, so it'll go down 13.2 in our resultant then. It's gonna, it, it'll go from the very beginning till the very end, all right? Now that's actually what we predicted when we put them all together. We predicted that it would go down into this quadrant, right? So that was our original prediction. Um, so that looks good. So this is 37.5 here, and I'm going to make a new page. Right. We have the X part is 37.5. The Y part is pointing down at 13.2. I don't need to show the negative. The negative just shows direction. And so what that means is that the resultant vector is the hypotenuse right here. We can get that by doing um, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So 37.5 squared plus 13.2 squared equals C squared. Punch that in my calculator, take the square root. What will C equal? Sounds good to me. So 39.76. You could have just written 39.8 as well. So this, that's the length of it. Now we need to find the angle, all right? And we could use any one of our trig functions. Which trig function do you want to use? Someone shout it out. Toa, all right, we'll use tangent. So what we want to do is we, want to take the inverse tangent of the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. So 13.2 divided by 37.5. If I punch that in my calculator, it'll give me the angle. And the angle is... Nineteen point four degrees. So then, when I would write this out, you guys, I would write it out as uh, I'm just going to type it. I'd write it out as thirty nine point seven six meters, um, and the angle will be nineteen point four degrees. And because this this is the angle right here, 
we were pointing east we had to turn south of that so I would say south of east so 39.76 meters at 19.4 degrees south of east so that all of this work was for one problem I'm sorry so, yep okay because because the angles right here correct um, and because it's right here the first direction I'm walking is east and then I'm turning I'm turning south of that and so the reason I put south of east is because I put the first direction and then at the end and the direction I turn at the beginning all right yeah and mr. and like I said I uh, on that document I put a link to mr. Hammond's video where he goes over this so if you guys just you know watch mr. Hammond too uh, it might help because it's one more person explaining it you could stop it and look at it and it's pretty good he has like 60,000 views on that video it's all the Leiden students checking it out I'm sure so Oops, 